Well, hey, everybody, it's Ilka here with Sonatype. I'm the field CTO uh, of Sonatype based out of Europe. And today I've got uh, Steve Poole, uh, developer advocate, and Mitin Savory, head of our solutions architecture team here in Europe. And what we're uh, uh, recording here is a quick video to discuss the uh, breaking news about the Log4j uh, security vulnerability. So this is quite a big thing, isn't it, guys? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Sorry, Steve, did you want to start? I, I, well, I, I was just uh, going to say, you know, we were, um, we see vulnerabilities coming through all the time. We see them in, in the Java space, since I'm a Java developer, we see this stuff come through and people go and it's always, oh, it's in Node or it's in Python and it's never in Java. But it seems to me that when these things turn up and we can point to others in the past, they end up being a big deal. And here we have yet another really big deal. Yeah, and I, and I think you know this this particular vulnerability is you know it's it's a core framework that's used in in several enterprise applications, right? Whether you're developing them yourselves or whether you're using external vendors, um, this is a logging framework that will exist and and is used by individuals to pretty much debug problems in in applications, um, and it really talks to you know, why you're using this component in the first place, right? And, and have you made the right decision or uh, is the hygiene of your, your, let's say your software supply chain, your uh, development tools and frameworks, you know, up to scratch, right? Have you kept them, you know, clean and updated them frequently? So okay. it's, it's, a, it's a real, I think there's a real sort of uh, risk here with this, this potential. Uh, yeah, so I, I'd say we, we shouldn't be saying that it's, that you shouldn't be using log4j, that's for sure. You need to use these sorts of tools. But it's this uh, emergence now of the, the certainties that we used to have, which was CVEs would get along and fixes would come through and we'd fix them. And this is just a good example of how that world is changing and how the exploit is out there and being used before we even had a CVE. I mean, this, this, we have a CVE now, so people can track it, but it is interesting to see how things have changed. Yeah. Um, Perhaps uh, just for everybody watching this, let's do a quick recap of how we got here and, and, and kind of why uh, this is such a big deal uh, for us today. So early this morning, uh, news broke out, uh, for example, in uh, Ars Technica about a zero day vulnerability uh, in, in the Log4j framework. Log4j is super, super popular. It's used in basically every type of uh, enterprise Java applications. So, you know, things like Elasticsearch, things like Hadoop, things like that. We'll all use uh, uh, Log4j to, um, uh, to basically write logs, which are used to diagnose things when they go wrong. So pretty much every piece of enterprise software, we use some logging framework. But generally speaking, in, in the Java world, the first place this was actually discovered in was Minecraft. So yesterday, some reports started going out about a security vulnerability in Minecraft being exploited through the chat. And it turns out it's this exact same vulnerability. So uh, this issue was uh, was uh, written about quite widely uh, overnight. And um, it ultimately boils down to a piece of proof of concept code uh, that was published on GitHub. Um, it was uh, published to the Apache Foundation a little bit in advance so that they could uh, produce a fix to it. But it is an extremely simple uh, exploit to run. Anyone can clone this repo and run the code. And uh, it requires no skill at all. So the, the CV essentially is getting a 10 out of 10 severity rating. Um, and it is comparable to some historical events that we've seen in the past, such as the Equifax event. Um, in all cases, we've already seen, uh, seen indications that there is mass scanning happening uh, on the internet. Um, and so we definitely agree that, um, you know, this is something that uh, is going to get uh, circulated very, very widely, very, very soon. And there's an immediate call to action to pretty much everybody maintaining enterprise software, as we were kind of just saying, uh, because uh, if you're using Log4j yourself, you're affected by this, or if you're using any software that uses Log4j, you're also affected. So uh, that's kind of uh, that's kind of the gist of it. Um, and it, you know, in our collective experiences, I think this is a this is about as popular as any any frame component can come. Yeah, exactly. And, and people can go read a bit more about how the exploit works and what the vulnerability is, but it is trivially simple. Um, it was, it, and it's based on 
um, whether or not you've got a remote um, JNI in, um, enabled. So basically what happens is, is that the log4j gets a string and if it's, and that string gets formatted. And if the objects, the classes that, that are referenced aren't available, they can be retrieved. And that's an arbitrary action. And so what people have figured out is, is that by putting in the right data, and I think the examples we've seen in Minecraft we use was in, um, in some headers. The header gets logged by the application because it's logging these things. Part of the logging is formatting. Part of the form formatting is finding objects. They don't exist, they get pulled in and suddenly you can run remote you know, um, arbitrary code. And that means you've got an RCE. Um, which is similar in, in to very much like the Equinox one that we had in there a few years ago. That, they, that same basic issue of being able to send some data to a server and use that to run code. So that's the big problem. And now it's a matter of identifying whether which versions of Log4j you're using, what versions of Java you're using, and getting them fixed. Yeah, I agree. I think, you know, it's, it's important for uh, development teams, you know, pretty much, you know, check the uh, hygiene of your projects, right? And then validate that you're not using this particular version or these version ranges of, of log4j. Um, and uh, again, yeah, I, I think um, just got to be aware of this. Uh, it's really, really important. Yeah, I mean, what yeah. Are, just to get people to be people aware of this, um, what we're talking about are examples where data that's coming into your server is being logged. And if, it, if it's headers and all those sorts of things, they're going to probably be happening before any security is checked. So uh, for this could easily be uh, a, a vulnerability that just bypasses your security checks because you may not have got to that point. It's just logging you know, the request, the details before you even do security validation. So it potentially, uh, could impact absolutely any Java server that's um, that, that's on the on on the net, and as we've already seen, people are doing mass scanning to try and find those. Yeah, uh, that's that's kind of the interesting thing about this. When we look at the you know kind of historical events like Equifax or or the Struts two uh, hack that actually led to you know several dozens of uh, uh, organizations being hacked. One of the kind of interesting things you noticed back then was that it only took a couple of hours for mass scanning to start. We've seen the indications of exactly the same activity happening now, you know, the tweet that I shared and, and, and others as well. Um, and in the case of the Struts2 vulnerability, um, you know, customers were being hacked uh, within uh, about 48 hours. You know, that's when we saw the first actual later than verified uh, events. Uh, what makes this even more uh, insidious is that Log4j is much more popular than the Struts2 framework. This is basically, you know, the de facto logging framework in Java. So, so you will see it very, very uh, often in, in, in many, many different applications. So uh, let's talk about a little bit about mitigation and what you can do about it, because, you know, the silver lining here is any, there's action that everybody can take right now uh, to fix it. So, um, uh, Steven uh, Mitten, what, what can you know developers do to fix this? Well, so the, the obvious thing, there's two, there's two aspects of this. There's what version of Java you're running. Um, and we know that pretty much anything beyond a Java 8, so uh, is, is, I'll say, safe at the moment, if that's our belief. And then, of course, versions of Log4j as well, and there's some version ranges for those. So in theory, it's step one upgrade to the very latest version of Log4j that you can get with this fix in and, and or look very hard at whether it's another reason to move from Java 8 to the, the, a more modern version. Yeah, I mean, effectively, the version ranges are 2 to uh, 2.14.1. Um, so, you know, immediate step is, is look at migrating, moving to 2.15, um, which is released actually on the 10th of December as well uh, and is available on, on, on Maven Central. But, um, you know, I think another thing you can, you can do is, is really understand what your architecture of your application is and, and uh, whether this thing exists in your application. So identifying where these things uh, exist and, and what applications are exposed. Um, you know, in some cases, uh, different version ranges are used, um, standardizing on version ranges so that you understand where that risk and that attack vector is within your organization. Um, but simply really understanding where this component exists in your, in your estate uh, is is a very simple step um, to to sort of 
you know, mitigate against problems like this. You, it's a controllable single point. Um, you understand where that risk exists. Fantastic. So basically upgrade to the latest log for J215 um, and make sure that your JDK is uh, at an appropriate new recent version. I think every JDK uh, is safe if it's up to a certain version but please do double check that uh, out there. And, you know, huge thanks uh, to the Apache Foundation for getting this release out quickly. We've been looking at uh, the release uh, timelines and they, they literally shortcut the usual process by uh, quite a lot of time. So really, really great to see that the volunteers over there are really uh, on top of this issue uh, and have really kind of taken Thank you this by the horn. So again, a huge thanks to, to everybody kind of involved there. So I guess uh, uh, let's just talk really briefly. If you're a Sonotype customer, um, you know, good news is um, it doesn't seem like our software is affected because we do not use the Log4j framework. Um, and also, uh, also, if you're a customer of Nexus Lifecycle, there is a search string that you can actually use uh, using either the advanced search in Nexus Lifecycle, you can actually search for Log4j and it'll show you every application uh, that's affected by it. Or you can use our REST API to search uh, for those issues as well. So, um, uh, so um, uh, you can use uh, Nexus Lifecycle to quickly find out if you're affected by this issue. So luckily some silver linings again for everybody. Uh, exactly. And I think, you know, even even as a um, Nexus Lifecycle customer, if you want to see where you're, um, where you're vulnerable, there is actually already a gist in GitHub that you can validate and, and uh, perform a search as well. So a um, couple of different ways to mitigate um, you know, this, this potential risk as well. All right. Uh, well, that is quite a lot for a Friday morning uh, to uh, digest. So why don't we upbreak it here? We're going to leave uh, links to our blog post in the description, as well as um, links to the scripts that we mentioned here. Um, any closing thoughts, Stephen Mitten? Uh, no, other than watch the space. Um, we know that how these things evolve. And if we're lucky, the risk will be We'll find out the risks were not as bad as we thought. If we're unlucky, we'll find out that actually there's some edges to this. So everyone should pay real attention to how this thing evolves over the next few days. Yeah, and I think from a more broader perspective, right, this is this is just another one of those software supply chain risks and attack vectors. So you know, if that isn't a you know a, a thing on your priority list right now, um, certainly this this is another example of it. And, and so, you know, raise awareness of that within the organization, really understand, you know, how you're using the software supply chain. Yeah, and finally, of course, uh, another parting thought is if you've already scanned your software uh, with our stuff, uh, our continuous monitoring will alert you uh, on the presence of this CV. So, uh, Let's keep an eye out on the situation as it evolves. Uh, and as we get further updates, we'll uh, make sure to um, uh, publish those out as soon as we find them out. So, hey, thanks, guys. And thanks, everybody. I hope uh, this will be helpful to you. Cheers. Bye. Bye.